So today we are going to discuss uh, a little bit more about the uh, normative approach. Um, uh, and uh, which means uh, uh, that um, the question we ask is not how the system uh, <coughs> is, what is the um, state of the system, but rather how it should be, okay? And uh, Nash, the concept of Nash equilibrium describes uh, uh, the system uh, <coughs> as, uh, <coughs> as it is, uh, as we expect uh, it to find it. Uh, so, um, so it's more of a, um, It's more a uh, say positive approach, and uh, as we have seen, uh, for example, in the prisoner's dilemma, there are situations where uh, uh, the uh, outcome of a Nash equilibrium is not really ideal, in the sense that uh, if you remember uh, the uh, in the Nash equilibrium, you have uh, that. Uh, uh, the players would be better off, uh, each of them uh, would be better off by cooperating, but instead, uh, because uh, um, defecting is a dominant strategy, they end up uh, with lower payoff uh, because both of them, uh, they, um, they um, defect. Okay, so this leads me to uh, define what is uh, 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 a notion by which you define uh, uh, um, um, an efficient outcome in an economic system. And this is uh, uh, what is called uh, Pareto efficiency. So, uh, in general terms, uh, uh, a system uh, uh, a system uh, is uh, uh, Pareto, uh, Pareto efficient so if uh, uh, it is not possible uh, to improve Uh, the payoff of someone without uh, uh, decreasing, uh, without decreasing the payoff of someone else. Okay. So and uh, so this uh, is a different notion uh, as a Nash equilibrium. So in a Nash equilibrium, uh, uh, just to repeat, uh, is a state uh, in which uh, um, no one can unilaterally uh, improve his own uh, uh, payoff with no regard at what happens to the payoff of, of the others. Okay, a Pareto efficient uh, outcome instead uh, is, a, is an outcome where essentially uh, uh, if you increase the payoff of someone, then uh, someone else uh, has to pay the cost. Okay, and essentially the idea is that uh, uh, you would like uh, um, an economic system from a normative approach, you would like uh, 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 an economic system to be Pareto efficient, okay? Because this does not mean that uh, um, uh, Pareto efficiency is a notion of efficiency. It's not uh, a, a notion of uh, fairness, okay? Uh, so this is uh, uh, not, uh, uh, because uh, a, a Pareto, uh, 
uh, efficient allocation of resources, for example, may also be very unequal, okay? So um, uh, there could be some agent uh, that, uh, some individual that uh, has a lot and some individuals that uh, are as uh, very few or nothing, okay? This is a system, I mean, the only thing is that you cannot uh, uh, make uh, this uh, everybody uh, more happy at the same time without making someone uh, less uh, uh, happy, okay? Okay, so today uh, I'm going to uh, start uh, uh, moving uh, uh, from game theory to economics by describing uh, uh, a little uh, bit of uh, uh, examples, a simple example that uh, elucidated a number of uh, uh, concepts that have to do with this uh, uh, normative approach. One is the issue of uh, public uh, goods. and uh, uh, property rights. Then uh, uh, I'm going to discuss uh, also uh, welfare, uh, welfare in an economy, in particular, um, uh, with respect to oligopolies or monopolies. And uh, uh, I will end up by discussing what is uh, uh, competitive market, okay? And then uh, this is uh, where we will start uh, uh, in the last uh, two lectures, okay? Okay, so very good. Um, so let's uh, start uh, <clears throat> by discussing uh, this uh, uh, issue of um, um, uh, these issues with a very simple uh, uh, problem, which is called the tragedy of the commons. So this is a, a very uh, a stark uh, 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 realization of how uh, Nash equilibrium uh, individuals just playing the Nash equilibrium may reach very inefficient uh, outcomes. Okay, and uh, so. <clears throat> Let us consider a situation where uh, uh, you have uh, a plot of land and, uh, uh, and a number of uh, farmers, okay, who live uh, uh, close to this plot of land. And uh, each of these farmers has his own farm and, uh, uh, and they have, uh, uh, they buy goats, okay? So farmer I uh, gets uh, GI goats. And then uh, these goats uh, go and graze uh, on this uh, um, common land, okay? So uh, each uh, of these uh, uh, farmers sends uh, these goats to graze on this land. And as a result, there will be a certain number of uh, uh, goats and the grass will be eaten up by these groats, uh, goats. And so um, the utility uh, of agent I, of farmer I. So uh, will depend both on the number of goats. This is the uh, number of goats. Uh, so uh, of goats. That uh, E will buy, or that E will uh, uh, maintain and on the number of goats that uh, the other people, the other farmers will, will uh, also uh, decide to have. Okay, and this is, will be proportional to the number of goats because uh, uh, at the end, uh, uh, these farmers uh, will uh, say sell the milk or sell the goats themselves. Uh, so the, the profit will be proportional to the number of goats. And then, uh, uh, 
uh, it will be uh, also proportional to a, a function that, uh, um, let me write it in this way. Uh, and this function here uh, depends, uh, so A is the area uh, of, uh, um, uh, of the lambda. And this, so A over G and G is the total number of goats. Let's say there are N, N uh, farmers. So this is the uh, total uh, number of goats. And uh, so, of course, the more uh, the more goats you have, uh, the uh, the least uh, uh, this uh, uh, the, the the pasture. Uh, uh, so, if the total, if the area of land per goat is larger, then uh, uh, the, the the profit of the farmer per goat will be larger. So. So this function uh, p uh, is a function of uh, its argument, uh, which is a over g, will be generally uh, say uh, an increasing function. Okay, there will be some increasing function, and um, uh, and say uh, uh, and c, this uh, is uh, is a cost of uh, maintaining uh, each of these goals, okay? The amount of work that it takes uh, to, to maintain each of these goals. Okay, so what is the uh, Nash equilibrium that uh, uh, we expect to find uh, in this situation? So, well, in order to find the Nash equilibrium, then uh, you have to take the derivative uh, of this utility function with respect to GI and uh, set it equal to zero. Um, okay, so I, okay. And, um, okay, so, and, uh, so if you take this derivative, uh, you, will say, uh, you will have that this is P of A divided by G uh, minus C. Uh, and then you have uh, uh, the derivative of P. Then you have P plus uh, GI times the first derivative of P in A over G times uh, the derivative of A over G with respect to uh, GI. And uh, because of this, uh, this is minus a over g squared, okay? So if you solve this equation for uh, uh, gi, what you find is that, uh, well, uh, the optimal strategy will be uh, given by, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, g, uh, g squared, g star squared, divided by A times uh, P prime of A over G star times uh, uh, P of A over G star minus C, okay? And uh, so in, if you sum these up from all the agents, uh, this will give you uh, a factor n, and this will be equal to uh, g star, the total level of uh, um, uh, the total number of goats uh, in the Nash equilibrium. Okay. So if you uh, look at this equation, so this equation here is the equation that gives you uh, a g star. And uh, you can see that uh, uh, as n increases, uh, uh, the, uh, so here uh, you see that uh, you have a term that increases with n. So you will have that g is an increasing function of n. 
So uh, as uh, the number of farmers increases, uh, you will have a lower and lower uh, fraction uh, of land for each of the goats. And uh, in the limit, when n goes to infinity, and, and what, you, what you can find uh, is that essentially um, the, uh, in the limit, when n is very large, g star will be very close to the situation where uh, if this is c, then uh, there is a point, uh, let's call it uh, g0, such that uh, essentially uh, uh, the, this, uh, uh, the profit for each goat is equal to zero. And uh, what you can uh, easily see is that uh, when n uh, goes to infinity, uh, this uh, uh, g star will uh, converge to, to this g zero as n goes to infinity. So now you understand why this is called a tragedy. It's called a tragedy because essentially, uh, if the number of farmers increases, then uh, their profit uh, becomes, uh, gets uh, 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 meager and meager, gets smaller and smaller. And so uh, the, the end also the land becomes uh, completely exploited. Okay, I mean, the, the, the grass in the land becomes completely exploited. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the reason why this is uh, not uh, an efficient outcome. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, it, this is uh, a, a Nash equilibrium. So, do you have questions on this? Okay, so looks like everything is clear. So sorry, me... I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, sorry, this P, I couldn't understand what is this capital P? So this capital P is essentially uh, uh, the productivity of each goat. So how, what is the revenue that you uh, uh, extract from uh, that a farmer extract from a single goat. And this uh, P, this revenue, depends on uh, how much area per goat uh, is available. Okay, the smaller the area per goat, uh, this A divided by G, the smaller is the uh, productivity of, of a single goat. Is this clear? Does it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, thank you. Okay. Can I ask a okay. question? Yes, please. Um, does A, so the area of the land, scales uh, as N, or is it constant? No, in this case, A is constant. You can take it, uh, well, it's, uh, um, it's uh, yes, it's a constant. It doesn't scale with N. I mean, in the real situation, you can think of, uh, uh, the plot of land being there, and then uh, farmers uh, can uh, uh, establish there, and uh, they, they, they can uh, uh, n can vary, and a can be the same. Okay, yep. so they are independent variables. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, very good. So, so let me. Yeah. Excuse me, could you just quickly explain uh, why does G star go to G zero mathematically? I understand it uh, from, from like an intuitive point of view, but could you explain how does the equation tell us that? Okay, so uh, if you look at this equation, you see that uh, this thing uh, is constant, okay? So, uh, because uh, say the, 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 the slope of this, curve uh, is essentially finite, okay? Uh, this is also uh, uh, finite because it cannot be larger than G0. So when N increases, uh, this has to go down. Ah, okay, okay, awesome. Okay, I understand, thank you. 
okay? You can have a finite G star when this goes as one over N, okay? Yes, and yes, yes, yes. If you work uh, the details of uh, this model a little bit uh, more, you, you can find out that uh, the, this utility of each of the farmers uh, is proportional to N to the minus two. Okay, is proportional to the area divided by n squared. Okay, so this uh, um, in the end uh, you will find that in the Nash equilibrium, this uh, uh, thing is proportional to the area divided by n squared. Okay. Okay, so let me now discuss uh, what uh, instead uh, would be a social optimum. Imagine that now uh, we have a social planner that steps in and say, uh, look, uh, I'm going to decide how many goods uh, you can buy, okay? And uh, you will have to uh, maintain these goods and I will, uh, find out this number in such a way that uh, the utility, the sum of the utility, the total welfare of, uh, uh, of the community of farmers is maximum, okay? So how does this uh, work? So, um, uh, so let me, uh, so, sorry, uh, okay, so, how does this work? So, so now the welfare, uh, there is a welfare function, which is uh, the sum of i of the utility of each of the agents, of each of the in farmers, okay? And uh, so if you look at what this is, this is just a G times uh, the P of A divided by G, minus uh, C, okay? So this is just a function of the total number of uh, um, goals, okay? And then uh, uh, if you uh, take a derivative of this welfare function with respect to the total number of goals, uh, what you find is that uh, this is, uh, gives you P of A over G minus C minus uh, uh, G, times uh, P prime of A over G times A over G squared, okay? And then uh, you set this equal uh, uh, to zero. And uh, so what you find here is that uh, now the G is uh, uh, equal to, um, uh, uh, P, so is P of A over C over G minus C divided by this P prime of uh, uh, A over G times uh, A. If I'm not mistaken, uh, this is uh, what it should be, okay? So, um, uh, so this is the social optimum. So you solve this equation. And uh, uh, so let me uh, check that I did it right. Uh, so uh, then, uh, um, right. so G uh, should be equal to, maybe this is to the minus one. Uh, sorry. Uh, um, Yes, also A, I think, multiplies P prime. The minus one, okay. So, but say, uh, this is uh, similar to the equation before, but you see that it does not depend on N, okay? So, uh, if you look at the graph, huh? I think A is in the denominator. A is in the denominator. Uh, I think uh, it is uh, not. Okay, but say, um, sorry, let's do it. So, okay, so you have uh, P minus C 
uh, uh, times uh, G minus P prime, uh, say P prime times uh, A is equal to zero, right? So G is equal to uh, P prime times A divided by P minus C, okay? Which is essentially- Ah, uh, yes, okay. Oh, okay, oh. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, you're right. Okay, very good. So, uh, but whatever it is, uh, uh, let's look at this uh, equation graphically. And um, uh, so you have, uh, uh, again, uh, your curve of A over G, which is the same as before, this is P, and uh, this is your C, so this is your point uh, uh, G zero. Now, the solution of this uh, uh, will be, well, it will be a point uh, uh, somewhere here, is G bar, and, uh, and it's uh, uh, and it's the uh, it will not depend on n, so uh, g bar is going to stay the same even if n uh, goes to infinity. So this means that in this situation, the utility of uh, each of these uh, uh, farmers will not be equal to one over n squared, but it will just be equal to essentially uh, will be proportional to a divided by n. So it will be n times larger than the utility in the Nash equilibrium, okay? So this is, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, what uh, would be a Pareto optimal situation, uh, whereas the Nash equilibrium is clearly not Pareto optimal because of course uh, you can, uh, there is another uh, equilibrium, which is this one, where everybody is better off, okay? Notice again uh, that uh, uh, in this solution, we didn't say anything about how we are going to split uh, this uh, total G into the individual farmers. You can uh, split it uh, however you like, and, uh, and this will be a Pareto optimal allocation. Uh, and as long, uh, so, and you can uh, go from one Pareto optimal allocation to another Pareto optimal allocation, if you, um, uh, if you um, give uh, some of the goats of one farmer, you give them to another farmer, but then, uh, uh, but the total number of goats have to remain constant, okay? Now, this is not a particularly uh, um, reasonable, uh, it's not a solution uh, that uh, uh, individuals uh, uh, like very much. Individuals do not like very much that uh, a central authority tells them uh, uh, what they should do. So uh, it is not a, so it is much better to try to find a decentralized uh, uh, solution, a solution where essentially the, the central, uh, uh, say, authority uh, fixes the rules. And then uh, given these rules, the um, individuals, they uh, maximize their uh, profit, okay? So one of these uh, ways of uh, achieving uh, uh, this um, uh, Pareto optimal allocation is by introducing uh, uh, what are called uh, property rights. Okay, so what is the idea? So you have this plot of land with all these farmers around and um, and essentially uh, what you do is uh, that uh, you decide that uh, if this is uh, uh, farmer I, he's going to be able to graze only in a fraction in, in, this, in this land AI. This guy is going to be able to uh, graze on this. Uh, uh, this uh, is going to graze on this. But there are say barriers 
that prevents uh, the goats uh, of Mr. I to go into the plot uh, uh, of land of Mr. J, okay? So, I mean, you introduce uh, fences and you give rights to individuals, uh, to individual farmers to graze uh, their goats only in their own uh, plot of land, okay? So what is the effect of this? So of course, uh, then uh, uh, the total area now is split uh, in uh, uh, smaller plots of land, okay? And what is the effect of this? That now the payoff of agent I is just a function of uh, GI, okay? And this function is just uh, uh, GI times the same uh, function as before of uh, uh, AI divided by uh, GI minus C, okay? So uh, what you can see very clearly is that, uh, say, the ratio uh, when uh, the agent uh, optimizes, uh, uh, maximizes this uh, function here, the optimal uh, solution that he will find uh, divided by AI will be equal to the social optimum, okay? So in other words, uh, each of these uh, individuals uh, will uh, uh, find uh, a function of, a, a, say, find a ratio of, uh, say, AI divided by GI, which is exactly equal to, uh, to uh, the social optimum, okay? And then uh, uh, the, if everybody does this, then uh, uh, the, the, the solution, the, the system as a whole will be um, socially optimal and will be a, a solution that maximizes the welfare. Okay, so notice uh, what we did uh, with the property rights. So we went from a situation uh, where we had the Nash equilibrium where the utility of uh, individuals also depended uh, on what other people do to a situation where instead uh, the utility of an individual does not depend on what other people do, okay? So the fact uh, that uh, the uh, utility of uh, an individual depends on uh, actions of other individuals uh, in economics is called uh, an externality. So, and uh, uh, essentially, whenever, if you have a rational individual that maximize their own uh, uh, benefit uh, and there are no externality, then uh, they will uh, uh, act uh, as, uh, 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 as a social planner that is uh, maximizing the total welfare, okay? But if there are externalities, then uh, this uh, may not be true. Okay, because you may end up uh, in the Nash equilibrium. So, uh, other questions on this uh, part? Okay, so the, <clears throat> the other uh, um, uh, consideration uh, to be done in this respect is that essentially the property, the problem in uh, uh, this situation here is that uh, you have uh, this plot of land which is a public uh, good. Okay, so that, uh, so it's public in the sense uh, that uh, uh, there are two ways that uh, uh, distinguish, uh, two things that may distinguish uh, a, a good from being public and private. The first one is that you can uh, uh, exclude others from uh, uh, exploiting it, okay? And uh, essentially uh, in this situation here, the fact that uh, uh, 
farmer I exploits uh, this uh, plot of land does not exclude, uh, does not prevent uh, others uh, from uh, uh, exploiting it, okay? When you introduce instead the property rights, uh, when you put fences, uh, then uh, you are excluding uh, other uh, farmers uh, to graze on your property, okay? So uh, what happens here is that uh, the, uh, you go from uh, this uh, tragedy of the commons to a social welfare, so a socially optimal solution, to a Pareto optimal solution, because uh, uh, you turn a public good into a private good, okay? The second uh, uh, characteristic of a public good uh, which is not, uh, uh, does not apply in this case, uh, is that uh, uh, when you consume it, uh, uh, the public good uh, is uh, diminished, okay? So if you think, uh, for example, information or knowledge is a public good, so the fact that uh, you know, uh, uh, so if you, you can think of, uh, uh, um, say the laws of relativity is a public good because uh, if uh, if you consume it, if you learn it, that does not uh, diminish uh, um, the laws of relativity. I mean, also other people can uh, uh, can essentially uh, benefit in the same way as you did. Okay. Instead, uh, in this particular case. Uh, this uh, public good uh, is, uh, um, uh, can, be, can be depleted, okay? So if you graze on the land, then uh, there will be less grass for me to graze on the same land, okay? Okay, so uh, there are a couple of questions. Uh, is, uh, is this a statement uh, that the property rights uh, still may not prevent the tragedy of uh, uh, commons? Since individual may all uh, all may end up in national equilibrium inside their cross. No, well, uh, if you um, say uh, if you when you set property rights, uh, then uh, the problem uh, of uh, each uh, individual becomes just an optimization problem. It is not a game. It is not a game. So they are playing against themselves. So they are not playing against anyone else. They are just uh, uh, optimizing uh, their payoff uh, given the constraints of how much land they have. Okay. So, the, the, uh, whereas uh, a Nash equilibrium is not, is the simultaneous optimization of different utility functions by different agents, okay, over different variables, okay. Other questions? Okay, so very good. So, um, okay, so, uh, but say you can play really uh, with this uh, game and do all the maths and the calculation. And um, I get convinced that uh, uh, this is uh, uh, what is going on, okay? So let me uh, turn to a different subject, uh, which is essentially, uh, instead uh, uh, the problem of uh, modeling an, uh, an economy. So we will uh, discuss this uh, next, I'll say in, in two weeks uh, in the last uh, two lectures uh, in more formal details. Uh. But now let me take uh, a very simple uh, description of, uh, uh, of an economy. Um, and uh, in this situation, I'm going to assume that there is just uh, one good. 
Okay, and then uh, there are, say, in an economy, what you have is uh, consumers, uh, and then you have uh, firms uh, that uh, uh, produce these goods. So the consumers, uh, they want to buy these goods uh, because uh, uh, they want to consume it, they want to eat it, uh, and firms, uh, they uh, produce this good uh, and uh, they want to uh, maximize their profit, okay? So uh, now, uh, so what do consumers do? Well, typically a consumer has a utility function uh, uh, that tells you how much they like uh, a certain amount of good G. And, uh, and the problem they solve is that uh, uh, they want to maximize uh, this uh, utility function uh, over G such that uh, the, uh, if the cost, if the price of this good is P, then uh, uh, the, the cost of the good must be less than uh, how much they have to uh, spend. So this is uh, the wealth. And uh, this is uh, the price. So this is telling you that uh, if, a, if a consumer has uh, $10 and the price is one, he will be able to buy only 10 units of good, okay? And then uh, say, if you look at what is the solution of this problem, imagine that uh, uh, this is G, this is utility function. Imagine that uh, this consumer has a utility function like this. Uh, this is typically what happens. It means that uh, say uh, the fact that this utility function is uh, 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 concave uh, means that uh, the, the when uh, the consumers have a lot of good, they, uh, uh, they like less this good uh, than when they have uh, uh, very little good. So this is called uh, satiation, okay? That uh, essentially you, once you eat, uh, say, uh, half a kilo of pasta, maybe you don't like uh, pasta any longer, okay? Okay, so the solution of this problem is a constraint optimization problem. And the way it works uh, is that uh, you draw a line uh, which has a slope uh, P, and then uh, you find a point uh, where uh, the, there is an intersect. Well, the, 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 the line with slope P is tangent to this point, uh, and this uh, gives you uh, how much you would buy at this uh, uh, price P, okay? So you may realize that uh, if the price is higher, imagine that the price is higher, then uh, you are going to buy less, okay? And if the price is, uh, is lower, you are going to buy more, okay? So if you uh, write what is uh, the, um, um, the price is a function of G, you again will find uh, a decreasing function, okay? Now let's, uh, so this is uh, uh, for the uh, consumers. So let's get uh, to the firms, okay? Let me uh, draw the consumers out of uh, the, of the picture and uh, let's uh, focus uh, instead uh, on the firms, okay? So the firms uh, have a profit. So imagine now that uh, there are, uh, uh, say, uh, there are N firms, okay, which are labeled uh, with the uh, index from one to N, okay? And the profit uh, of firm I if uh, uh, she produces uh, GI of goods uh, and uh, the others produce, uh, the other firms produce uh, G minus I is proportional to how much they produce times the price at which they sell 
Now the price at which they sell again uh, will be uh, will depend on uh, the total uh, number of goods. So let me uh, call this G. This is the total uh, amount of goods that consumers will buy minus uh, a cost. This is a cost of production. Okay, this, uh, this C is a, a cost of production. Okay, now these uh, apparently were essentially, again, uh, this G is uh, uh, because it's the total amount that is bought by consumer, it must also be the total number, total amount uh, that is produced uh, by firms, okay? Now you realize that uh, this uh, setting is very uh, similar to the ones uh, that to the one that uh, we have uh, described for uh, um, uh, for the previous example of the tragedy of the commons. Okay. Now, uh, so uh, you can. Uh, see what is the Nash equilibrium in this case. Uh, and the Nash equilibrium, again, uh, you have to take a derivative of UI with respect to GI, uh, keeping other things fixed. And uh, here you have P minus C minus uh, um, plus GI times uh, the derivative of uh, this uh, function P of G prime times the derivative of G with respect to GI, uh, which is equal to one, okay? And then uh, you have to set uh, this equal to zero. So you have that uh, the Nash equilibrium strategy would be equal to P of this G minus C divided by, uh, well, there should be a minus sign, but let me take the absolute value of, of G which means that uh, if you uh, com compute what is the G star, the total production in the Nash equilibrium, then there will be an N. And, uh, and so G star will satisfy uh, this, uh, this, uh, this equation here, okay? Now you see what happens. What happens is essentially the same as what was happening uh, in the tragedy of the commons that uh, if uh, uh, you have a C, which is uh, essentially here, this is the cost of production, then uh, this is uh, the G zero, which is the point uh, where uh, um, the price of the good is equal to the cost of the unit cost of production. Then uh, as N goes to infinity, uh, this uh, G star will go to uh, converge to G zero, okay? So now this is uh, a tragedy for the firms, but it's not a tragedy for consumers because consumers will be able to buy uh, the good at a cheaper price, okay? So indeed, uh, this uh, situation where, uh, where, uh, where the number of firms goes to infinity and uh, the, the price uh, uh, is equal to the cost of production is uh, a situation uh, where, uh, um, uh, which is called uh, 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 perfect competition perfect uh, competition because it's a situation where essentially the uh, firms uh, uh, compete and they cannot uh, manipulate uh, the price. So the, the price is, uh, uh, is fixed and it is equal to the um, um, cost of production, okay? And uh, so indeed, uh, in this uh, setting, uh, this uh, uh, perfect competition is also uh, Pareto optimal 
from the point of view of welfare. Uh, so why is this? So let me try to explain this. Uh, so because welfare is usually measured as the total utility of uh, um, as the total utility of a, a society. The total utility of a society is uh, uh, is equal to the total utility of the consumers, because in the end. Uh, Firms are owned by computer, by uh, by individuals, by consumers. So the the profits uh, that uh, the earns that the, the that the firms make uh, end up in the budget set uh, of the consumers, uh, and they are used to buy the goods. Okay, so welfare is essentially. Uh, uh, is equal to the uh, sum of the utilities uh, of consumers. Okay, so, and in this case, uh, uh, when you have a perfect competition, the price for consumers is as low as possible. And, uh, the, uh, and as a result, uh, the, uh, this is, the most efficient uh, and Pareto optimal situation. Instead, uh, what before was uh, the social optimum, uh, in this case uh, uh, becomes uh, what is the um, situation when, uh, uh, when n is equal to one. When n is equal to one, you have uh, a, what is called a, a monopolist. So a monopolist uh, will essentially uh, solve this problem with n equal to one, and essentially will fix a price which is much higher than uh, uh, the uh, price that you would have in competitive markets. And, uh, and this is very uh, inefficient. Uh, this is not uh, very efficient for the consumers. And, um, and essentially the, the, the amount, uh, uh, the monetary loss for the society as a whole is essentially given by the area uh, under this curve here, because this is uh, essentially how much uh, uh, revenue is lost because of lack of perfect competition, okay? So the idea, uh, what I wanted to, uh, the idea uh, of uh, today's lecture was essentially to show uh, that uh, there may be different uh, ways in which uh, even the same model uh, can be interpreted and there can be different stories behind the, a different, uh, the, the same model. And, um, and that, there is a, a, a type of, uh, 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 in certain cases, uh, you are interested in describing the system, finding what is the Nash equilibrium, predicting what is going to happen. In some other cases, you are interested in measuring how efficient uh, uh, your uh, allocation is uh, in terms of uh, the welfare of the individuals. Okay, so from this point of view, this is why essentially in most uh, uh, Western countries, uh, uh, monopolists uh, are not uh, allowed. And uh, also the, the, what is not allowed is also to form uh, uh, cartels. Cartels are uh, situations where firms uh, uh, strike an agreement uh, on uh, how much they should produce in order to manipulate prices. So the, as we will see in the next lecture, the uh, uh, perfect uh, uh, situation in perfect competition is one where uh, the first maximize profit, uh, the consumers maximize their utility, and the market 
fixes the prices. So, but the non, nor the utilities, nor the, nor the firms, nor the consumers manipulate prices, can uh, uh, affect uh, uh, prices uh, by their uh, behavior. Okay. So, questions. Yeah, I have a question. You mentioned that Pareto optimality for the uh, consumers is Z0. Uh, what would be the Pareto optimal outcome for the firms? Is it G bar, means which is a monopoly? Uh, no. So, okay. So, uh, the Pareto optimal for the consumers uh, is when uh, P of G is equal to C. Okay, so it's this point here. Okay, or if you want, when uh, this uh, is equal to zero, or the profit of the firms is equal to zero. Okay, yeah. now, uh, and the reason why you talk about uh, uh, Pareto optimality is because uh, in an economy, firms uh, are owned by individuals, and individuals are consumers. And the profits uh, that uh, individuals uh, uh, make uh, out of the share uh, of owning company, owning shares of companies, uh, is essentially uh, spent in buying goods. Okay, so in a, uh, I mean, in this picture of an economy, all you care is about the welfare of uh, consumers okay there is no um uh, doesn't make sense to consider the uh, profit of firms okay or the, okay so the other thing is uh, say uh um yes yeah, so for the firms uh, but if you just uh, uh, think about uh, uh say uh, what would be Pareto? What would be Pareto optimal for the firms? Uh, then you are right. It is uh, this point here, where they agree on producing this much, and then they share, say, the profits. Okay. Uh, professor, so yeah. for a mon for a monopolist system. Uh, so could you say the case? So could you say that it's the case that uh, a monopolist could um, decrease G arbitrarily in order to diminish the supply and thus ramp up the prices. And that's the reason why the area uh, of uh, what do you call the area? Yes. The, the, the shaded area is kind of maximized. Because uh, I, I, I assume that in a monopolist system, the uh, area that denotes how much value is lost um the shaded area is maximized no or is that no, that's no? Not true. no oh it, okay uh, i mean the the, the g bar is only determined by the maximization of the profit of the monopolist doesn't really uh, uh care about inflicting as much law as much uh, pain as possible on the consumers so <laughs> ah, okay okay Okay, yes. Okay. So, indeed, let's say the monopolist uh, could also choose uh, to produce uh, this one, this, uh, this uh, G here, okay, and charge this price here, okay. Yes. But in this case, he would inflict a loss uh, to himself also. He would inflict uh, a, 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 a damage to consumers. Uh, because uh, he would uh, uh, sell uh, a very small amount of this good at a very high price, but at the same time, he would also uh, make uh, damage to himself. Oh, okay, okay. Because, because the consumers wouldn't be willing to pay the price? No, 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 no. So this is the price, this curve is yeah. uh, tells you for a particular for a particular amount G, 
what is the price uh, at which uh, consumer will be willing to buy okay ah okay so you can think of this uh, in this way so the uh, consumers uh, will buy uh, an infinite amount uh, of this good if the price so okay so if if g uh, uh, so this is the price uh, that uh, consumers uh, will uh, um, agree to pay uh, for this quantity g okay yes um, so there is a question. So we are assuming that consumers, as individuals, own firms. They own the firms. Yes. If yes, where this hypothesis enters in the calculation? No, it does not enter into this calculation. This is a very simple, uh, say, example that I uh, choose just to illustrate a number of uh, subject. Uh, the we are going to discuss this uh, next time when we discuss a more general uh, model of an economy, which is called the uh, general uh, equilibrium theory. Okay. Can I ask another question? Yes, please. Yeah. So I was thinking if a monopoly is not an efficient market, neither is. Um, this Pareto optimal condition of Z0 an efficient market as far as firms are concerned, will then an efficient market be where there is an oligopoly, a few firms uh, dictating everything? So, yeah, so essentially, so this thing uh, uh, corresponds to N uh, equal one, no? If you take N equal two, you will have another point here. If you take n equal three, you will get another point here. And as you increase n, you will converge to this point of G zero, okay? So this is uh, uh, a situation where you have a finite number of firms. Uh, it's called uh, oligopoly, oligopoly. Okay, which means uh, uh, the, say, tyranny of the few, okay, oligos, few, or say, um, and, uh, yeah, so, so then you had a question on uh, uh, what, what uh, on efficiency, which I didn't understand. I was asking, uh, the, the G bar is not an efficient outcome for consumers. G zero is not an efficient outcome for firms. So I was yeah. thinking maybe an oligopoly uh, condition would be an efficient outcome for all. Yes, yes, no, but as I was trying to uh, uh, mention, yes, so uh, you could uh, um, say if you consider a game where you have, uh, say, uh, is the, the firms uh, are different players than consumers, uh, then you would be right, okay? But what I'm saying is that firms uh, in real life are owned by consumers. And so they are not really different players, okay? Okay. Yeah, but it is not really realistic that consumers. So look, uh, um, I think uh, every uh, CEO on this planet was uh, on the phones. Uh, sorry, no, no, I mean, the, the, the rationale here is just that any, uh, say, owner of a firm, as to eat, as to put gasoline in the car, as to, as to consume as any other individual, okay? As to buy goods, okay? So he's also a consumer. Okay, okay. I get it from where you're coming from now.
Okay, so uh, I think uh, we should uh, stop here and take a uh, few minutes of uh, break before uh, going back to uh, neuroscience. <laughs>